Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Get More From Your BAS with Digitally Connected Belimo Devices, which will be presented today by Tom Danzer. We really appreciate you joining us today. My name is Ron Pilkowitz, and I will be your moderator. Because we know you will want to watch this webinar again, it will be recorded and posted on Belimo's YouTube site. We will have a question and answer session at the end of this presentation, and we'd like to hear from you. So at any, at any time, I invite you to type your questions into the question box, and I will read them aloud during the question and answer session. Tom will answer as many questions as we have time for, and rest assured, if he does not answer your question, he will you will receive an answer via email. If you are having any difficulty today, simply type me a note in the chat box, and I will try to assist you. I'll now turn the presentation right over to Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Ron. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, giving a little bit of your time today to learn more about Belimos Connected Products. Again, my name's Tom Denzer, and I'm a business development manager here at Belimo Americas for digital products. So over the next, hopefully, 20 to 25 minutes, my goals here is just to in increase your awareness about the various connected products Belimo has to offer, uh, give some examples of how leveraging a digital connection versus traditional analog signals can actually save you some money. And I'd like to spend a bit of time talking about our Belimo Cloud and some of the products and companies that are using it today. And then finally, we'll look at a few resources that uh, maybe the creative people in the audience can use to build their own applications using smart products and the Belimo digital ecosystem. So first off, let's let's define two different types of classes, types or, or classes of digital devices. So first we have what we'd call a connected device. And just as the name says, they're connected to other devices with a communication bus. So in a building, this is typically BACnet, and you likely don't have just two devices, but quite a few of them all connected to the same network. Connected devices look and feel just like traditional analog ones, but instead of using analog voltages to, to link devices together, the devices literally talk to each other. Smart devices have the same communication capability as connected devices, but um, they typically have application logic built into them um, so that they can maybe optimize a local process or even act autonomously. Um, smart devices typically have multiple sensors attached um, as you can see here with our energy valve product, that's that's kind of our flagship smart device. Um, and, and in these cases, communication gets uh, extremely important here since smart devices produ produce a lot of data. And it's much more efficient to talk to a device to get this data than it would be to just use a, a huge number of analog signals and IO points. So connected devices, they they just, they're, they're a dumb device that acts just like a traditional one, except you communicate with them instead of analog signals and then smart devices, which actually have logic inside of them. So let's look at some of our um, Belimo, what we would call connected devices. So first we have a, a class of product. Um, it's called our, our mod line of actuators. They come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, torque ranges, spring, non-spring. Um, and again, this is just a connected device. It lets you talk to the actuator. Um, we also have a, a PR actuator, uh, very similar. It has, has a BACnet or Modbus connection to it. Um, and again, you talk to the actuator. Your digital control system can give it commands uh, via, via BACnet or Modbus rather than using analog signals. And then we also have a line of sensors that have uh, BACnet and Modbus communication. Um, I'm showing a couple here. This one's an outdoor air sensor. And then we have a pipe and duct sensor. Both of these have the ability to, to uh, monitor air quality, temperature, and humidity. And then we have a, an exciting new line of, of connected device, um, which is our uh, Belimo Sensors Inc. Um, line of gas, uh, gas detection sensors. So any kind of um, harmful gases, uh, refrigerant, um, refrigerants, and things like that, we have a connected version of this sensor as well. And then on the other side, we have um, what we call our IP line of actuators. And these are all actuators that have an Ethernet interface on them. And they have similar functionality in that they're, they're just kind of a dumb device that you can communicate with uh, instead of using analog signals. Um, but these guys on the left are all um, 
they all have RS-45 communication. So it's a two wire interface. So they can do BACnet MSTP or Modbus RTU. And then these guys up here, these IP actuators, they all have ethernet interfaces on them. So with those, it's BACnet IP um, or Modbus TCP. So why would you wanna use a connected device instead of an analog one? Um, first reason, um, in, in, in some cases, you can actually have significantly lower installation costs. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into an example in one of the follow-up slides, but the idea is that instead of a bunch of home runs, you can run a bus to all of your devices and you can save on conduit and wire. You, you can also uh, reduce your costs from an IO standpoint. So every, every device, whether it's a sensor or an actuator, needs uh, analog inputs and outputs to, to connect to it. If you don't need those inputs and outputs anymore, you're just talking to the device. You don't need those IO anymore. And another thing that's often overlooked is that with a, with a connected device, you're actually dealing with real data. If you ask one of these sensors, um, what's the CO2 uh, in parts per million, it'll tell you I have 540 parts per million. Whereas if you were dealing in analog signals, it might say 2.7 volts and you'd have to do some conversion and conversions are prone to errors. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing to always be dealing in absolute numbers as opposed to having to convert analog signals. With the actuators, you get free feedback. So oftentimes on a project, you might just use an analog output to control an actuator because it costs more money to also tie in the feedback so that not only can you tell the actuator to, where to go, but also know where it's at. When you're communicating with an actuator, it's all free. You don't have to add any additional, uh, additional points or anything like that. And then finally, each of these devices has uh, nice diagnostic information in it that you can't get with analog signals, but you can read that if you're talking to them with either BACnet or Modbus. So we also understand that there is a higher cost um, to these products because there's more electronics in them to make that communication possible. We believe that higher cost can be offset by the lower installation costs. And then also we recognize that setup and commissioning of a communicating device instead of just an analog device is a little more complicated, um, which takes us to the next point. And that's that we, you know, we thoroughly recognize that for smart devices to be successful, they have to be easy to use. They have to be easy to set up and they have to be easy to commission. So we have the Blimo Assistant app to make that easier. Um, this uses your, your smartphone with near field communication. You, you touch your phone on, on the device, whether it's an actuator or a sensor. And now instead of using dip switches or, or proprietary handheld tools or PC software to configure communication um, of these devices, you, you do it with your phone makes it really easy and you can even do it while it's still in the box without power your smartphone actually has the nfc radio has enough power to activate the uh, nfc chip inside the device to talk to it without power on the device um, as our portfolio of communicating and smart devices expands uh, you can expect to see nfc as a consistent interface uh, for streamlining setup of these future devices so let's look at a, an application example. Um, this would be a you know, fairly typical built up air handler. Um, it's got a number of damper actuators, a bunch of valves, a bunch of sensors, a few fans likely with VFDs on them. Um, if you were to look at the wiring for this from a, from a typical control panel, the DDC control panel, um, I don't have all the devices on here because it gets even messier, but you can see it's a, it's a lot of wire, a lot of cable, a lot of IO points, um, and a lot of home runs. And, and again, if this is in a mechanical room, um, and depending on the region you're at, you might have to run all of this in, in conduit. And that, and that starts to get pretty expensive because you're running four, five, six big sticks of conduit all the way over to the air handler rather than what you could do with, with uh, connected devices um, just run a bus, just run power and, and BACnet MSTP communication, and, and then you just daisy chain all the devices together. Uh, it's much simpler uh, from, a, from a layout standpoint, and the installation costs can uh, take a dramatic drop. So I would encourage you on uh, future projects um, to, to consider that in, in a situation where you have a complicated air handler with a lot of devices. And if you could, if you could convert those analog devices to bus, bus devices, 
look at what you could save from a labor standpoint. So let's look at a little more detail at some of these connected connected products. So I mentioned this before, we have the, the mod line of actuators. Um, these guys are have RS-45 communication in them, two-wire communication, so they, um, they can do BACnet MSTP uh, or Modbus RTU. And they have the added benefit of having a sensor input on them. So you can hook a, a passive, an active, or a dry contact sensor up to each one of these actuators. And then once you're connected to them, you can give them a position command. Um, you can get position feedback. Remember I mentioned before that free feedback. You can read the sensor value, and then you can actually read the, the actuator health. We also have those, those communicating sensors. Again, your DDC controller would talk back to MSTP or Modbus RTU to the sensors. Um, these are pretty slick. You can have, um, you know, we're measuring three different properties inside of a single sensor. Um, if you do that with analog signals, now you have power and then you have three uh, analog voltages or a, or a passive uh, uh, temperature sensor to measure at your at your DDC controller. So there's pretty significant IO savings when you use one of these products. Um, you also have the added benefit of not just measuring temperature, relative humidity, and CO2, but inside the product, we calculate absolute humidity, enthalpy, and dew, dew point for you. So you get all six of those properties um, in one of these devices and all communicated over, over two wires. Um, and then the last connected product we talked about is our, is our IP actuators. These have an ethernet port on them um, and they have two sensor inputs. So you can still give them a position command. Um, you get that free position feedback. You can read two different sensor values plus actuator health. Um, again, these are IP connected. So you can use BACnet IP or Modbus TCP in your building automation system. And then these have the added feature that you can activate the cloud client. So basically there's some software in this actuator that can connect outbound to the Belimo cloud. And, and we're gonna touch on that uh, real shortly. So remember, we also have uh, not just those connected devices we've covered, but smart devices. So I wanna make sure you guys are aware of what we have to offer. We'll start with the, the Zip Economizer. It has uh, backnet communication and it can control uh, the economizer damper on a rooftop unit. We have an electronic pressure independent valve and an energy valve. Both are pressure independent control devices. Energy valve has added uh, sensors for supply and return water so it can do uh, delta T management of a coil. Uh, we have a six-way pressure independent valve. This has uh, BACnet and Modbus communication as well that can allow pressure independent control of a single coil in a four pipe system. So heating and cooling both modulated in a pressure independent way for a single uh, coil. And we have some airflow control devices. Again, all of these have communication capabilities in, in, in addition to the smarts that are inside of them. These are both intended to modulate uh, a damper to maintain a pressure set point or a flow rate set point. Um, this LMV product, it's all in one. Um, it has, has both an, uh, a BACnet and a Modbus version, and it does have NFC that you can just tap on it to configure it, and it, it'll do airflow control. The, this uh, VRU is basically the guts of the LMV, um, but doesn't have the actuator attached, so that if you need a bigger actuator or a fail-safe actuator, you can use this product as well. And then the last one's kind of an exciting new product that isn't released yet, but thought it might be interesting to tell you about. I believe quarter three is when we'll be releasing this. Is It's a new uh, device that called the FSKN that will perform uh, remote testing of life safety dampers. So rather than having to go to a damper and manually open and close it and make sure it works, you can over BACnet or Modbus tell this box to test the actuator. So it's a... Um, Really, really cool new development. And then last but not least, we also have a device we call ClearEdge, which works directly with our energy valves. You install one of these boxes in a building, it talks using BACnet to a, a group of energy valves and it will aggregate data, it'll optimize how they work, it'll provide uh, delta T and flow performance curves all within a web interface and housed inside of this device. So it basically takes all of your energy valves and gives you a common interface to optimize and analyze how they're working. So those are our smart devices available today. Um, 
Now I want to touch on our, our digital ecosystem. So this is a schematic of, of what that looks like today. There's a couple key points to make here. Um, first, um, we're a device manufacturer. So we believe that our, our smart devices create valuable data and we want to make this data as easy and cost effective as possible to use. Now we don't charge for the data, we don't charge for storing the data, and we don't build services that we charge for. Um, our goal is to empower others to build applications and business uses for this data. So our, this ecosystem is built on a, on a couple of key components, uh, mostly communication paths, which we refer to as APIs. Um, we have internal APIs. So we have one that connects our production system to our cloud. And then we also have what we call device APIs, which connect our devices to our cloud. Um, we have a temporary and a permanent connection, one that uses a smartphone to act on behalf of an NFC actuator. And then another one, um, which is a direct connection from products with ethernet ports like energy valve and the IP actuators. Um, and then we also have this, this is the, the, the critical API is this, is this one that connects the data that we store on our cloud to third parties and opens that up so they can, they can build valuable things with that. Um, and then a digital representation of each valve or each device, I should say, is stored in the cloud. Uh, and we refer to this as does the rest of the industry as, as a digital twin. Now this twin stores as much information as possible about each device. So we can have production information, and startup information, configure information, and runtime information. So again, a digital cop, a digital twin is a copy of a real device. Um, this is a twin of my house. Uh, my my kids built this uh, during the first few months of COVID when they uh, were stranded at home, and um, it attempts to represent every detail of the house down to the furniture and plants. The difference between this Lego twin. And a, and a digital twin is obviously, one's made of Legos, uh, and the other difference is that, oh, and the other's made of bits and bytes, um, but also a digital twin is synchronized with the real device as often as possible. So I've painted a couple of rooms in our house since this model was built, but the model still shows them in the old color. Um, if I, we had a digital twin in my house, that would get synchronized. Um, so just like an energy valve, so this guy, out in the field, someone changes this energy valve from position control to flow control, that information gets synchronized up to the digital twin, which again is, is a representation of what's going on in this energy valve. And this also includes other information like um, security logs, timestamped operating data, like temperature, flow rates, et cetera. That's, that's what's stored in a basically a historical log that sits alongside that digital twin. So there's a number of companies today um, that are building or have built products that work with Belimo's digital twins. Um, again, our goal isn't to build those services ourselves. Our goal is to empower third parties to find useful way to use this data um, and monetize it and create products for end users. So two really good examples of this are a company called Buildings IoT. Um, they have a, a product called OnPoint and then Copper Tree Analytics, which has a product called uh, Kaizen. And both of these solutions are really designed to improve comfort and efficiency in buildings through enhanced data. And the, and the robust set of data that our cloud provides to them um, and the ease of this cloud to cloud API connection uh, makes their solutions stronger and easier to implement. Now there's a few other companies that uh, provide solutions today based upon digital connections to our devices. Uh, a few of them, um, Brainbox AI uh, and Facilio, um, they both are, are in the market of uh, providing optimization of, of systems and then also providing facility management from the cloud. And SkyBill um, is, a, is a tenant billing company that's able to take um, energy, energy data out of our cloud, turn it into uh, utility billing for, for tenants. Um, and then we also have uh, companies or connectors to uh, platforms from companies like SkySpark and Finstack. So if you're familiar with either of those platforms, you can build uh, visualization and optimization solutions with them. And finally, for those um, who like to do custom programming, we, we have a, a 
connector to a cloud instance of Node-RED, so you can visually program applications um, using data that's stored in a digital twin in our cloud and actually interact with the devices through that programming. So um, there's, some, there's some really cool stuff out there. And we have a what we call our, our cloud application developer space. So again, this is for the, 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 the dabblers, the creative, uh, the creative people in the audience. You may want to build your own application. Um, maybe you watched the, um, the webinar a couple of weeks ago that Russ Brown gave on our new potable water valves. These are NSF rated valves. Maybe, maybe the idea of that valve with an IP actuator on it and, and a flow sensor, and you can start dreaming up things you could do in a, in a residence for uh, leak protection, uh, flood protection, by, by combining the smarts um, of that actuator with a flow meter or a moisture sensor that you could then create a shutoff solution for a, for a NSF rated valve. So things like that can all be done with, with programming in the cloud. We have uh, a full suite of documentation available uh, to get you started, and we have some examples. And then there's an application process um, where if you're interested in, in building your own application, um, you become an official developer. We give you full access to the API documentation and, and set you on your way. Um, if you're interested in that, please visit uh, www.belimo.com slash IoT developer. IoT slash developers, or you could probably just Google Belimo IoT and it'll get you there. Um, and then also, if you have any questions about um, possible applications that you might dream up um, or any of the content um, that I covered here today, feel free to reach out to us at digital.support at us.belimo.com. And we'd be happy to either answer your questions via email or set up a call and have a conversation about any application ideas you might have. So that concludes the, the presentation part of the webinar. I appreciate you attending. Um, and now Ron will, uh, looks like we have some time. Ron will open it up for some questions. Excellent, thank you very much, Tom. Before we move on to questions, please remember to follow Belimo on social media to keep connected on what's going on with us and what's new and exciting coming up. We do have a bunch of questions that have come in, so I'll start reading a couple of them off. Is there a time span for the synchronization? If so, how long? Um, it's actually something that's configurable, um, but but our energy valve product, I believe is five minutes. So every five minutes, it, it makes a connection to the, an outbound connection to the cloud and makes sure everything is up to date. Okay. Can you daisy chain IP devices? You can. Um, Belimo doesn't have any what we would call dual port IP devices today, meaning the, the device itself has a has a built-in two port network switch on them. There are products from some from some control manufacturers, and they're mostly VAV products that have two Ethernet ports, and then you can daisy chain Ethernet. It's it's definitely a um, a trend in the industry because it gives you the benefit of high-speed IP communication um, along with the installation ease of daisy chaining. So we, we see that as a, as a, um, a future trend. We also, uh, we also see migration from, from two-wire devices to IP devices or, or Ethernet-type devices as a trend as well. So in the future, you should start to see more um, Belimo smart devices with, with Ethernet connections on them, and they may come in pairs. Or we may support um, a single port with power over Ethernet. There's there are a lot of options out there. Okay. Is there a sampling program to try out a smart valve and demo to customers? A sampling program. Um, I'm not sure what's meant by that sampling program. Okay. We could always I would I would that. suggest maybe uh, maybe I can follow up with that whoever asked that question um, offline. That's great. Okay. Can the COM chip on the IP devices be removed at the factory to satisfy a client's ban on wireless connectivity? Can we? So we do have um, we have. I'm assuming this is talking about NFC. So with NFC is wireless. Um, it's it's very close. It's almost almost requires contact, but 
but we we do still have some security concerns from from people who have a, a blanket statement that says no wireless in their buildings. And we do have, um, I'm honestly not positive about the about the release of that with our products that include uh, NFC today, but that is definitely on our roadmap that you'll be able to permanently disable um, NFC. And it might be released already, and I apologize for not knowing that answer, um, rather than remove the, the chip. And we've had some pretty high profile companies with very high profile security concerns analyze our solution and they're comfortable with it. And it involves leaving the NFC chip in place, but fully disabling it. Okay. Do the devices require a 24 volt power source? Um, everything that I showed um, today can be powered with 24 volts AC or 24 volts DC, with the exception of the upcoming FSKN which is that uh, life safety uh, testing device, which is 120 volt power. And the clear edge um, uh, device, which is not powered with 24 volts. It has a, you know, a, like a wall wart power supply, like a typical small computer device. But everything else, yes, 24 volts. Okay, we'll take one more question. Can you explain a little bit more about what happens when an actuator loses communication with the BAS device controlling it? Um, if it's talking via BACnet um, um, or Modbus, we, we have a pretty unique solution there um, because there's always a concern, okay, if I, if I have a networked controlled device and it loses communication, it's just gonna sit there. But our, our products have, a, have an option. We, we call it our bus watchdog. Um, and basically, it monitors the the status of commands from a from a client device. So if you have a DDC controller controlling a valve, and it's constantly giving it a, a new position command or flow rate command, um, you can set a timeout that says, if I don't hear anything for this many seconds, then I do X. So you could say, if I don't hear a command for five minutes or two minutes, um, I want to go open or I want to go closed or I wanna stay where I'm at. So we've kind of covered that as best we can um, to make loss of communications not a catastrophic thing, but just more like a fail-safe mode. Excellent, thank you so much, Tom. That's all we have time for right now. Uh, I will say that Tom will answer the rest of the questions that have come across via email. And I'd like to thank you, Tom, for presenting today, as well as everyone else for attending the webinar. If you think of any questions afterwards, please email training at us.belimo.com and I will be sure to get the question to Tom. And also please join us for our next webinar on May 12th. Danielle Kaminsky will give an overview of Select Pro online, uh, our sizing and selection and order, ordering made simple. All right, thank you so much again and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.